Hello there, my name is Omer Shlomovitz and I am a co-founder here at KZEN where we build Zengo and uh, in this uh, short talk I would like to explain part of uh, our innovation here in, in this product and mainly focus on the lower level of uh, our technology which is the cryptography and the tri specifically threshold cryptography. So I would like to start by giving you uh, the high level model of what is a wallet. Okay? So wallet or in other name, a key management system is basically we can look at it as composed of three different boxes. Okay? So we have uh, a machine, we have uh, a human and we have a blockchain. Let's understand each one of those. So a human is um, not something you usually model, but in our case it does make sense and uh, it did happen before in, in uh, academia. So we model uh, a human, which is the operator that operates the wallet. The machine is the software or hardware that uh, actually stores the key and generates the signatures. And eventually you need uh, the blockchain to send transaction to uh, where they get verified by verification process. Okay, so eventually the human will go uh, and generate some information to generate the transaction, will ask the machine to sign it, which will send it to the blockchain. Now, what we do in our, uh, I mean, our architecture in Zengo is a bit different. We are not changing the human and the blockchain, but we do take this machine and separate it into two different machines. Okay, so let's call them C and S. Now, in our case, only the C will be connected to the human and only the, uh, the S or the server will be connected to the blockchain. For some reasons that uh, would make sense when we speak about higher level of our architecture. What's interesting here is that there are, there are two functionalities that happen between those two parties and both happens in a distributed way. So one is the key generation and one is the digital signature generation. Now let's understand it a bit better. In general, um, in the field of multi-party computation, there is protocols for threshold signatures. So what we want to achieve from a multi-party computation in general is that the computation will be correct, uh, meaning that we will be able to generate a verifiable transaction, a verifiable signature, and also we want to keep private. We want to, there is a property of privacy, meaning that there are secret information lies in the uh, client and secret information in the server, and, the, and this secret information will not leak during the computation. So this is what's called secure computation. And in our case, our computation is key generation and digital signature. So at first, uh, the client and the server will generate uh, a key such in a distribu distributed way, such that one, let's call it part or secret share of the key will lie uh, in the client and one will lie in the server. Afterwards, when the human will provide the necessary input, the client and the server will be able to generate the signature together without exposing their secret information. And this is really innovative, and let's understand what we are getting out of it. Of course, the server will eventually send the transaction to the blockchain. Now, we are eliminating a single point of failure, because if you look at the uh, classical model, you see that this machine, whether it's attacked uh, or damaged in some way, will cause the key to get lost, okay? Or stolen, which is worse. And in our case, you can damage one of the parties, but uh, it will still not um, make the key disappear or, or get stolen. So we need, uh, in our case, this is two-party setting, but we can also generalize it into uh, a multi-party setting, and it will be uh, more clear when we discuss um, how to do recovery. But in our case, one of those, each of this machine, you, we can tolerate uh, a fault or um, even a, a malicious party, some attacker, some hacker that gets control of one of these machines and we still be able to recover. Okay, so no harm can be done. This is to say that still attacks on the links between uh, this link, between the blockchain and the wallet and between the human and the, uh, and the wallet can still be attacked and uh, we are dealing with it in higher levels uh, in terms of security and anti-fraud as we'll explain uh, in the future. And what's nice is that because we are doing this change in the very, very basic way that our application works, we are actually designed the entire system from system engineering perspective to maintain this no single point of failure throughout the entire application. So this is just the guarantees that we get from the cryptography, but it's important to say that in general, this kind of uh, design principle uh, will stay throughout the entire life of the application. Now. I want to explain a bit about uh, our cryptographic stack, okay, how we are building this type of cryptography. Usually in classical wallets we are using cryptography which is 
the same as what's being used in the blockchain. So the blockchain is a very powerful um, component, uh, a very powerful concept, and it requires you to do some basic public key cryptography. What we have done is we decided to take this public key cryptography and push it to the maximum. So we are using a really bleeding edge cryptography straight from the academia. Okay? And in the specific case of Bitcoin, for example, and other popular coins, the protocol that's being used is called ECDSA. And only recently, in the past few years, there have been uh, very uh, good works that uh, managed to do threshold ECDSA or distributed key generation and signing in a way that is also efficient. And this is what we try to do. It. So we are taking protocols straight from the papers and implement them in, uh, into a real life application, into mobile. We need to, uh, this is the, the, the structure of our libraries. And let's start from the actual DCDSA. So this is a library, and as I uh, mentioned, uh, it requires some complex cryptography. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is maybe would be good enough as a standalone if you are a cryptographer who wants to use threshold signature for some reason. But we need to wrap it up, or we need to plug it, or we need to plug all sorts of cryptography into it to make it actually work securely. So first of all, we need to plug some basic cryptographic primitives. For the threshold DCDSA case, we need some elliptical cryptography primitives, and we also need uh, somewhat homomorphic encryption. We are using the Palio crypto system for this. So we have libraries for both of them, also for zero knowledge proofs uh, based on Palio crypto system. Then we are wrapping everything up and connecting it into a uh, key management system. So this is already one step uh, in, our, in the direction of our application, which is how to make threshold signature as part of a key management system. This makes the, the API for this type of cryptography more intuitive to engineers to understand. But it's not enough. Eventually, we want to run it, as I said, in a, more, in a server and cloud configuration. So we're doing another rep with a very, very limited and basic API so that nothing can go wrong. Basically, only you can, the only thing you can do is key generation and signing. So this is a library we call Gotham. You can, by the way, find everything, all the libraries uh, in our GitHub. And this Gotham also, plug, you need to plug it, uh, you need to plug your the, the database and all other uh, elements that will make it part of a bigger system. As I said, you can find each one of those uh, libraries. You can use them as standalones. Uh, all of it is open source. It was um, because of the complexity we make sure it gets externally audited, internally audited, reviewed by, by peers from academia, from industry, and better tested as much as possible. So feel free to take a look and, and play with it and see for yourself how it works. To conclude, I want to, um, I have to make two conclusions. So one is to give you this sense of uh, the model that we are kind of changing in a way that allows us to do distributed computing, which gives us no single point of failure. And the second point is that there is a complexity and it's an entire stack of libraries, but those are very well thought of and supposed to work in a very clean way as part of the application, which uh, as you can feel if you download Zengo, you'll see how fast and smooth it goes. Thank you.